you know, is, you know, organizations are really embracing the collaboration part of the tool and the, the ease of use. <clears throat> um, but when it comes to bringing the telephony piece of Microsoft Teams into the into the mix, um, organizations are somewhat um, obliged to go down the Microsoft route for a few reasons. One, because it's easy and, and two, because um, it's probably part of the licensing that they've got already in terms of phone systems. But the, the, what the idea of today is to really kind of open up um, the idea that you don't necessarily have to have Microsoft route your calls um, when making a phone call via Teams. My, Microsoft are a software provider. They're not necessarily in the market for <coughs> telephony. Um, so we've got three providers on, on, on today to talk about how they can integrate into Microsoft Teams and the benefits that they can provide through um, routing the calls over their networks, which are carrier grade voice networks. Um, the, the benefits that sit within that are the inherent resiliency you get from a true voice carrier. But um, I mean, one of the biggest overriding factors is the cost savings. Microsoft call plans and um, the tariffs that they associate to call charges are very costly. Um, so by going direct to a carrier, there can be significant cost savings. Um, my name's Scott Aldridge. I work for a company called Primetel. We are consultants. Um, uh, we try to act as trusted advisors to organizations like yourselves that have a challenge that needs to be met. Um, and we go out and find the suppliers that can fulfill that brief. We can work with you in many different ways, whether it's from solution design, tender writing, supplier introduction, um, supplier evaluation. We can work with you along that, that complete journey. And, and by doing that, a lot of companies that we work with see that the um, the supplier evaluation process is speeded up quite significantly, 60% in some cases, um, and there's also significant cost savings to be made. So, <clears throat> um, feel free to chip in if anyone's got any questions along the way. Raise your hand or just ask. Um, today we'll be hearing from Massagi, Vonage, and Colt. Um, but first up is uh, Massagi, so I'll hand over to to Ben. Thanks, Scott. Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Crandon. I'm a UC and contact center solution specialist looking after our customers and prospects in, in EMEA. Um, next slide, please, Greg. Just before we get going, I thought it was quite interesting to actually look back at the evolution of, of what, we, what we've got today of Microsoft Teams and where it kind of come from. I think I'm sure all of us will remember back in the late 90s, Microsoft Messenger, which was the first major sort of instant messaging platform that sort of hit the, hit the market, um, and that was obviously a pure public cloud offering back then. Kind of died, uh, died a death back in 2006 and was surpassed by sort of Skype and Facebook Messenger, which then obviously become WhatsApp. Uh, Microsoft still wanted to obviously play in this space and went out and acquired Skype um, for $8.5 billion back in 2011. And that was a, actually a healthy £5 billion profit for eBay, funny enough who actually owned them at the time. And this was the first sort of area where, or first sort of toe in the water for, for Microsoft getting involved in connections to the PSDN, you know, the public telephone network. From that, um, they, they quickly, you know, span out a, a business grade co collaboration tool. Obviously before that, there was the Office Communicator, which was mainly instant messaging. But this was the first sort of piece that enabled people to have a bit of dialing conferencing into, into, a, into a bridge mainly share content internally there wasn't any federation back then um was still a little bit clunky for any, any of us out there used link back in the day um which then sort of changed its brand into to skype for business um this was when microsoft first launched their sort of full video experience being able to do video conferencing proper federation so being able to talk to people externally from your organization and the first sort of steps into some very basic PSDN uh, PBX functionality, um, very limited at the time. Then uh, obviously migrating into Microsoft Teams, what we use today, which is obviously a full public cloud solution of expanded PBX functionality and you know persistent workspace and, and, and links into SharePoint, which we see today. And if anyone would have noticed a couple of weeks back, Microsoft actually went out and bought Metaswitch which will probably see them add sort of 5G, 4G capabilities and expand that PBX functionality within Microsoft Teams. And I think that's one of the key points I'd sort of I'd recommend that you guys look at is one, 
if anything you take away from this, make sure that you know the PBX functionality is good. But as, as sort of Scott mentioned, they're looking at the network. So just on the Microsoft licensing, this is very complicated. There's far more, there's a lot of different licensing models still out there, but the majority of users have or organizations have E1 or E3 licensing. You don't actually have any collaboration features with that that license set, and you need to add these on for you know per user per month pricing for some collaboration three dollars as an add-on, and then PBX functionality is eight eight dollar add-on per user per month. If you've got E5 licensing, you've got on the, the the full you know full leap into Microsoft, then you're going to have those that functionality already included. So just to add, just to add to that, Ben, because we've got a few schools on. I think the school equivalent is is A3 and A5, just to put that into perspective. Thank you, Scott. All right. um, and as, as you rightly said, you know, Microsoft have made available PSDN calling bundles. Um, the way that they've marketed it, marketed it is, again, a per user per month price. Um, so, you know, for $12 or, you know, 3,000 domestic minutes per user per month. And then so if you're, you know, an international organization, adding 600 international minutes for another $10 per month, only available in nine countries, that's going to get extremely expensive extremely quickly if you're, you know, because you are paying per user per month. And I think one of the things that you've, you've really got to look out for is that, um, you know, Microsoft are not a telco. They're not a, a network provider. You know, whose network are you using? You know, any real-time application as you move to the cloud, the network backbone, which I'll talk about messages in a moment, is fundamentally important to make sure that you're going to have a good experience and the call quality or the video quality is good. Um, with Microsoft options, I, I can tell you it's not one network, it's a mixture of, of multiple networks. And as soon as you start to do that, you lose the ability to control the quality and give a, a guarantee on the services. Just breaking into obviously the support element of it, um, not sure if anyone's ever tried to get support from Microsoft, but they're, they're pretty clear that their approach is a, a non-human contact approach. So you're logging tickets, just you're sending emails. If you if that you've got a problem with your your lines or your your voice features, uh, or, or somebody can't get a you know can't make a phone call to you, that's probably not fit for purpose. Um, and as I talked about earlier, so limited features at the moment. It's getting better. You know, credit where credit's due. They have improved it a lot since Skype for Business. But, you know, some of the basic stuff that you'd expect being able to dial via, via digits rather than by name, PA attendant functionality, you know, limited capabilities in some of the PBX function set. And also, you know, things like call recording. And if you get anyone uses a contact center out there, not part of the product suite or, or kind of roadmap for, for Microsoft, you're looking at third parties there. So one thing I said, as I said earlier, please, if you, once you're doing your evaluations, make sure the PBX functionality is right for your business. And obviously make sure that anyone you talk to about the PSDN, that you've got a quality network delivering it. So moving on to about MACG, we were founded back in 2000, set up by a group of engineers that wanted to build a quality global network, got fed up of some of the mainstream providers out there. And being engineers, wanted to do it best in breed. So those, those bullet points that you see at the bottom there, they're SLEs, the SLAs that we guarantee. And you may say, say to yourself, why is it important that you know, in my, my packet, my data packet, arrives in sequence? If you say a word and it's being delivered delivered across a data network, if that packet of voice doesn't arrive in the right order, that word you've just said doesn't sound very good. So again, just drilling into that network backbone, making sure that there's there's real quality there. Obviously, our, our network's been seen as visionary four years in a row um, by Gartner, and hence why we built in uh, built in real time built in real-time applications and services such as CCAS and UCAS and we've actually been a, a global Broadworks or Broadsoft provider now owned by Cisco for 15 years. Obviously just moving on to um, the next slide. The three core things that we do as I talked about having a global network are you know SD-WAN a software-defined network built in with that managed security very important now and cloud communications uh, being UCAS and CCAS. Everything that obviously which we're going to talk about today, everything that we do is designed and uh, you know, delivered to give you got to give the customer the best analytics. And we've got some really sort of market leading portals, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And that's ultimately to give you guys self service to control your your own services directly with MacG. So here you can see our global network. Everywhere you've got a, a blue country is where we've got a customer. 
and you've got the black dots on there, which you just about see, which is our, our global data network. And what we actually done is just to stay there, please, Greg, is uh, we, we actually break out in 27 countries, which is the green dots on that map there, giving full regulatory compliant voice services. So that's number portability, emergency service dialing, and in-country dial tone. And that was built off the back of delivering Broadsoft globally for 15 years. Obviously, we've seen the shift in the market and people, you know, for, for a lot of organizations, Teams is fit for purpose. So at a carrier level, we've we've joined our network and basically punched a hole in the side of Teams and built a highly available, highly resilient connectivity into each of their regions and each of their nodes to give us on net direct routing capabilities from, from, from Microsoft directly. Um, here you can obviously see the countries that I talked a little bit uh, about earlier. Next slide. So next slide, please, Greg. Can you guys see the SIP trunking service plan slide? No, still in the countries. Okay. Just while you, you, okay. you, you took, brilliant, thank you. So what we've done for a long time is allow our customers to centralize uh, and pull their SIP trunks on a constant level uh, when it was being delivered to site by site or phone systems at each site. Obviously teams being centralized, that's you know giving everybody the ability to put all of their, their incontinent traffic with one provider at one location. What where that enables you to do is get economies of scale around your call paths with most of you only pay for the concurrent calls that you need within each region. So some great economies of scale if you're a global organization. If you're just a, a single country, still absolutely competitive from delivering in these markets for 15 years. With any telco organizations, we've got different usage models, pay for pence per minute or you know, bundled minutes included for a fixed price um, within the platform. One, one important thing, again, just talking about any network provider, make sure that anyone you're speaking to has got the ability to do proper full prevention um, within our network. You know, if it recognizes mysterious calling patterns or particular we've got countries that are blocked as standard, it will actually stop that call and alert you to make sure that, you know, there's not going to be some fraud being rung up, which is quite a, something you need to watch out for when moving to SIP and, and cloud services. Next slide. As I talked about earlier, at the moment, um, if anyone from the Microsoft Teams environment, it's it's a public only service, so you have to use the internet to get to it. From there, you've got your your PBX licensing, as I said, and then you've got your call-in plans. Next slide. What we're actually doing is then, uh, rather than that call traffic having to loop back down to your site to break out locally, as a lot of a lot of providers will will do with sort of a, a sort of a dedicated session border controller, which is like a kind of like a firewall for voice. We've done that connectivity for you. You don't need to worry about any hardware. You don't need to worry about any software. You literally buy the SIP trunks, the number of call paths that you need, and the call packets that you that you that that you require, or call bundles that you require, and away you go. You we are you directly break out onto Maysage's private network, and that's key a, a key differentiator with us is that. Once you've broken out onto our network, if you're making a call and you know you, you you're rather than using the, the public internet as a lot of providers will, you're using Messages private network backbone, which enables us to guarantee the call quality and the services of video, etc., that, that we can provide. Um, I think just from an enterprise point of view, just touching back on those, that feature set where I talked about the PVX functionality within Teams not sometimes being fit for purpose where we have a lot of success is helping people with that transition to cloud so giving people the ability just next slide greg to do um one you know 90 percent of the users may be perfectly fine using microsoft teams but if you've got users or people within that you know so you need a an advanced rvr or something a little bit different that teams is not going to be able to do using our, our network and our inbuilt applications we're able to give you the best of both and that, you know across both platforms extension intended extension dialing auto attendant and hunt groups across both platforms so it basically gives the the organization the ability to move to the cloud at their own pace and de-risk whereas a lot of providers out there are going to want you to rip and replace just drilling into a little bit more some some added extras that we provide and any sort of network provider or telco provider that's kind of worth their salt should have these features built in their network and available to you free of charge so we have our uc analyst which gives you real time the ability in real time to monitor number of calls number of users 
uh, number of inbound and outbound call utilization, and even then drilling to call quality. You know, we we know the quality of our network is second to none. We will give you a free online tool to trace and test every single call that is made in and out of Teams. Um, and, and see the call quality of it. And this is the same tools that, as I talked about earlier, our, our engineers are, are using. So if there is, a, is any issues that ever arise, we say less finger pointing, you know, quickly within a few moments, we can tell you where those issues are. So again, very important that with any network provider or SIP trunking provider gives you the tools to back up what they're saying. I think that's it. Cool. Thank you for your time, guys. If there's any questions, happy to take them now or, or at the end. No, thanks, Ben. That was that was really good. And I think, um, you know, the real salient points there are around, you know, the, working with a provider that's got the right infrastructure and the right um, business models to support business voice are going to give you the, the, the better levels of support. They're going to protect against fraud. They're going to give you that cost, that stable network and ultimately give you a cost effective solution. So no, really good points there. And thanks, Ben. Um, so now um, now we're here from uh, Adam Wilson at Vonage. Thank you very much, Scott. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all well and safe. And uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Vonage. Um, together with, of course, our uh, our solution, uh, integrated solution with Microsoft Teams. So, yeah, my name's Adam Wilson uh, from Vonage. I'm responsible for the uh, channel business, the indirect channel business for Vonage across EMEA. So, um, Vonage uh, was founded in 2001 and uh, indeed provided voice over IP capabilities initially to the home. And we reached 2 million subscriptions on our platform with that broadband voice product. We were in fact one of the sort of co-pioneers of voice over IP and have been providing voice over IP based solutions and now unified comms based solutions ever since uh, ever since those early years 2001 to sort of 2005 um, that type of time period. If we if we fast track a little bit to 2007 we we floated the company in the United States where we're headquartered. Um, we now have 2200 people globally. Uh, approximately 500 of those people based in the UK based on some of the acquisitions we've made. So uh, we very much started life as an early pioneer of voice over IP um, to, and then not only to the home but of course then to the small business and indeed now to mid-market and enterprise businesses, um, healthcare organisations um, as well as the education sector. We're providing these solutions to schools, universities and colleges both in the UK um, and also in Asia, as well as the United States. So telecommunications is very much in our DNA. We have made nine acquisitions over the last seven years, however, which has very much transformed our organization from purely telecommunications to a business to business software as a service company. And today um, we are providing a public cloud enabled um, communications platform across the three domains of unified communications and collaboration, contact centers, which are very much CRM led where customer data usually, usually resides, and also APIs, which is enabling applications with communications. So three of those acquisitions that it's worthy of just uh, noting. Um, number one, two years ago, we acquired New Voice Media, which has um, an excellent integration into Salesforce, uh, which is a leading CRM platform. Secondly, Nexmo, at the time, the second largest API business globally after Twilio. We acquired Nexmo two years ago as well. Um, and that gives us really the ability to provide programmable communication. So we can program numbers. We can indeed program applications to communicate. So a customer of ours would be Uber, for example, and the two factor authentication that we all probably know if we use Uber. Um, when, of course, we're looking to set up ourselves and verify our identity into the, the Uber app. Uber really wouldn't be as, you know, as good an application if it wasn't able to communi communicate with all of us as users of that application. So that gives you a feel of what APIs really means. And probably thirdly, and just to note as well, Over.ai, an Israeli headquartered artif artificial intelligence company, which gives us virtual assistance capability um, to, to help with some of the the more simplistic questions that uh, customers have of businesses they buy products and services from. So that's quite a, a trending area at the moment in the customer contact world. So um, really to sort of summarize, we're a cloud communications company. 
Um, we own all of our own technology. Um, we also have spent a lot of time on ensuring that we can provide the best possible integrations to other key CRM platforms, but also Microsoft Teams. And that's, of course, what we're going to talk about today. So the industry term really for what we do is computer telephony integration. And uh, I'm actually not really a technical person, but I think that kind of says what it is on the tin, really. That is making uh, either a CRM platform or a collaboration platform like Microsoft Teams into a voice communications platform. So really turbocharging the voice element within those platforms. They're not designed to be voice platforms um, and therefore we can provide the CTI into those platforms to turn them into voice comms platforms. As we do with Salesforce, we can do the same with Microsoft Teams. So um, Gartner has recognized us as a leader for contact center for the last four years in Western Europe based on the new voice media integration with um, CRMs like Salesforce. But importantly for this call, we do um, pride ourselves on voice assurance. What that really means is decoupling our voice architecture um, and being able to support companies with a single software instance and a global calling plan. So our, our, I think it's important to, to, to mention again and just to reiterate um, that we own this technology stack. Um, whilst we're not dependent therefore on third parties, we do place heavy emphasis on integrating to third party applications. And indeed, we have a product team purely set up um, to, to assist with, uh, you know, with integrations into these other key applications that organizations are using today. So um, we have been busy integrating um, many pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, which might be a reason why you haven't heard so much about Vonage. Um, over the years, we, we've been integrating, of course, all the organizations we've acquired. Nine companies in seven years is, is quite a lot of work. Um, and now we've rebranded the company in March this year with the black and white livery you see on the slides here. And uh, we, we've done that on the basis that we can address a business's entire communications stack or communications requirements across internal comms and collaboration with unified communications, external customer contact, and indeed APIs. So we see that businesses, um, educational establishments, healthcare organizations require consistency in all aspects of their comms around these areas, these use cases I've just mentioned, and therefore the ability also to program their applications to communicate, because applications, of course, and the mobile world is the world we now all live in. So businesses are challenged by the plethora of comms channels used by consumers, and they really just need one platform across all use cases to compete based on the experience they provide to their users or their customers. So let's focus on voice for today. So the slide we see here in front of us, Vonage from Microsoft Teams. Businesses can use Microsoft Teams as their phone system, as long as they of course acquire that phone system add-on that you have to from Microsoft. But indeed with Vonage plugged into the Microsoft Teams um, integration and indeed Im embedding our, our voice component into Microsoft Teams, you have the benefit of also um, using the Vonage business communications application uh, as effectively your cloud PBX providing call management, call control, minutes, numbers. Uh, the numbers, for example, we can provide numbers in 36 international locations and 132 SDD code numbers across the UK. Um, we are a telecommunications provider as well. After all, that is, uh, like I say, part of our uh, big part of our history, and we still have the ability to provide all of those uh, elements, which of course um, customers require today, um, as well as endpoint devices. So businesses can use a mix of existing VoIP phones, or indeed Microsoft Teams user devices, or indeed Microsoft Teams, of course, as the soft phone with the uh, dial pad uh, on the basis the phone system add-on has been purchased. But you have the you have the you have a reliance therefore on Vonage to deliver the following integration capabilities. So click to call with Microsoft Teams um, or Microsoft Office to the ability to make and receive calls via the Teams soft phone across all Teams and enabled devices, and that includes extension dialing, um, surfacing the presence when someone is potentially then of course making an external call, which would use the Vonage telephony platform, we can still surface the presence within Microsoft Teams together with call control, call history, voicemail to email and call recording, all that I'll explain in the next slides. 
So in order to make and receive calls, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some screenshots. It is a native, what we call a native integration. So you will not see really on the basis that uh, Microsoft provides the functionality, you will not see any mention of Vonage business communications. You will not see any branding for Vonage within the Microsoft Teams UI that your users might be already using today. And there's no disruption, therefore, to how they use it, especially if you've spent time and money to train all of those users and uh, employees. So it's a native experience. You know that Vonage is working away in the background to provide, if you like, as I said, a turbocharged voice capability. So you can make calls in the same way. Click on the phone icon in the left menu um, or, or indeed click on a link for, for click to call. Call control, what I really mean here is, of course, being able to hang up and terminate the call, place the call on hold, transfer the call again in a native way. You can consult and transfer the call. Obviously, all um, you can do those things with Microsoft Teams internally on net today. But of course, being able to do that externally is what you actually actually want to be able to achieve in your organization in order to, of, of course, reach your end customers, indeed your, your, your end clients. As mentioned, surfacing the presence. So of course, we're used to the, the presence icons now. Different collaboration tools, of course, look slightly different, but I think we all understand, you know, you've got a traffic light sort of set up here um, when someone's available or indeed um, a red sort of traffic light when someone's busy on a call. So of course, the integration exists. So when that person's making an external call um, using the Vonage platform, um, you, you would expect the, the red light to, to show up and indeed it will. Again, Teams activities, including all the calls made on the Vonage platform, we will insert all those activities in a completely native way that, um, that users and IT managers are used to within the Teams activities page. Voicemails, I know Microsoft uh, do have the capability to transcribe. Um, VBC, of course, has the same as you'd expect of a PBX capability in the cloud. Um, we can do that, but actually when it comes to the delta between what Microsoft can do and what Vonage can provide, it's really, we have the ability to then send that to email as well. So the transcription can be sent to email, which I must say I really enjoy because I'm, I'm very much, uh, I'm terrible at picking up voicemails uh, um, at the best of times. So having that sent to your email is, is very useful. And now what I'm going to do here is just going to run through, um, I've, I've just selected um, seven other sort of PBX type features that Microsoft is not offering yet at this point in time. Of course, um, some of the acquisitions have, have been mentioned in the prior presentation today that may well catch up, but um, follow me, call announce, call monitoring. If you can just go back a slide, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, receptionist console, call continuity, call screening and caller ID. I have seven features that therefore Vonage can provide in addition to what Microsoft Teams natively provides today. Follow me would allow you to set up um, the, 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 the fact that calls can follow on multiple numbers. So call this number for three rings, then move to, to, to this number for the next three rings, that type of follow me approach. Call announce, which whispers an audible tag to the user before connect, connecting the call, which can be very useful. Um, you know, it can be very useful for, say, supervisors or team leads when, of course, they're providing a white glove service, potentially wanting to hear who's actually calling to make the best use of, of, of their time and uh, to, to make sure that they're, they're dealing with the highest priority calls. Call monitoring, so actually being able to monitor calls that other employees are making, potentially, um, to, to whisper to an internal colleague that's having a call to maybe help advise them if they're a supervisor and wants to coach that individual on how best to, to manage that call. And then also you can potentially barge into the call um, at the right moment to assist um, your internal employee, agent, customer service representative or inside salesperson to help them with um, managing that call. Receptionist console, um, I would say this is a very important one. Um, it's, uh, you know, we, we're used to receptionists having a, a, large, um, a large telephony device on the desk, with lots of flashing lights. We'd obviously taken this away and brought this into the, the new world of, of, um, of cloud-based telephony. And that, of course, means that we can provide um, an interface. So if you'd like to just skip forward a couple of slides for me, Greg, I can show that if you move forward a bit more. That one there, that thank you very much. So this one here shows you what that looks like. So uh, you can see the call come in. You can do all of those standard things like park, hold, transfer, consult and transfer. You can see if there's other calls waiting. You can then actually drag and drop 
a call to another employee. So rather than having to star or hash press, you know, a number of uh, digits on the on the on the hard phone, so to speak, you can actually drag and drop it. So it's really a uh, transforming all of that that we've been used to over the years um, from a sort of a hard phone sort of traditional telephony um, perspective into the new world of uh, software based cloud communications and drag and drop to that to the to the person that you'd like to transfer the call to. So follow me, I've explained already. If you can just go back, these are in a little bit of a different order. Apologies, a virtual receptionist, if you could just go to that. Thank you very much. So as part of the, the VBC license, every single um, license um, will actually include virtual receptionist. So for example, if you wanted to give all of your teachers or heads of department or um, in, you know team leads the ability to have a virtual receptionist, they could all potentially have one virtual receptionist of their own and therefore they could set up a message and a very brief IVR if required. I mean, that, that's of course, uh, I'm just a, a sort of a use case just to sort of give you a feeling for what the, what the capabilities are and what you can expect of the platform. And again, the IVR, you could set that up to, to work in a, you know, at a certain time of day, deliver a certain type of message to a certain extension. Thank you. We can move on to um, this. Thank you very much. Also, just to let you know that this is uh, you know, one cloud communi communications platform um, across the three domains of Unified Comms, Contact Center and API capabilities that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. The beauty of that is that we, we have been, and especially in light of the current pandemic situation we find ourselves in, we have been um, deploying customers in, in as little as 24 hours. Uh, so uh, this is an example of a law firm that actually needed to go remote overnight. Um, we take it for granted, in an, especially in a communications technology company, that um, on a Tuesday we heard about um, the fact that we might need to all go to and work from home. On the Friday at Vonage, we were all at home. Within, sort of, say, three days, we were all having to work remotely. Um, I take it probably for granted that I'm able just to continue being as productive. That's not the case for all of my customers, clients and partners. And indeed, this law firm was struggling when they had all of their, their partners and uh, legal counsel at home. So we were able to set them up with remote based capabilities based on um, you know, the fact that they were already using Microsoft Teams and we were able to deploy the voice component within VBC, Vonage Business Communications within 24 hours. Next slide. So I've added a slide for this week. Um, Scott did mention that there might be uh, quite a number of, uh, of you from the education um, sort of industry. And uh, that's something, of course, I wanted just to touch on. This is actually um, a case study from an organization called Chegg. Chegg is actually an application provider um, specializing in e-learning platforms for, for the education sector. Um, so it's not act they're not actually an education establishment themselves. But uh, indeed, they, they've actually leveraged our APIs to provide, to embed video and audio and text into their e-learning application. So rather than students potentially viewing content sort of statically just online um, and then going to another application to communicate with the right tutor, they actually have everything in one application. Within the, within the Chegg application, they can go into that application, see their online content, work through that, and then establish connection with a tutor. Um, I am that tutor, have chat, and also have a video discussion based uh, discussion with the, the right tutor. And everything's within one interface. And uh, just, to, just to let you know, this is obviously publicly available information on our website, vonage.com, if you'd like to learn more. So in summary, what do you get from, from Vonage? So uh, you get the following. It is an integrated solution I've been talking to you about today based on Vonage Business Communications, but like I say, plumbed in, if you will, to uh, Microsoft Teams. So leveraging very much the fact that Microsoft Teams is the application that the user or employee is using, um, but actually using that in a way that uh, that that allows you to you know dial externally and leverage some of those other pbx type features and functions i've spoken about so we have an administration portal also uh, capabilities for for users to set up their own um, settings and also we have business continuity settings within the platform if indeed microsoft teams did go down i believe it did at the beginning of the pandemic we have the ability to continue to carry your telephony calls over the bonnage business communications platform and uh, we do provide five nines of reliability on our, on our SLA um, over the public cloud you may you may query 
but indeed the public cloud has come a long way from where it started and uh, indeed we're able to uphold those SLAs to our customers today, also leveraging some smart WAN devices on our internet connection to do so. So uh, that summarises, I hope, the, uh, the presentation I gave. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, but uh, thank you very much and I'll pass back to, uh, back to Scott. Thank you, Adam. Um, yeah, that was really good. And, and um, just to pick up on, on, on one of the points that was made there around user adoptability, um, the, the fact that, you know, you, you, people, people know how to use Teams. It's a familiar device for them. So, you know, when, when deploying any kind of new collaboration tool or any phone system, one of the biggest challenges companies face is getting people to use it. You know, you're, you're already there with Teams. You know, people know it. People know how to use it. So by enabling the calling functionality behind it and still presenting it as Teams, um, you, the, the, that adoptability journey is, is a lot easier. So I think that's why it's definitely being embraced as a total collaboration tool. But thank you, Adam. That, that was really good. Um, Pleasure. So, yeah, next uh, we will hear from uh, Rui at Colt. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Primetel, for the for the invitation to attend this 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 webinar. So my name is Rui Farage. I'm the product manager of Colt Intelligent Communication at Colt. Um, and who is Colt? Uh, you ask. So Colt is a is a is a service provider with its fully owned uh, backbone, and uh, we have just some of the big numbers, which which makes us. Uh, a very big player on the service provider industry. So we are, we have almost 200k, uh, 200 kilometers, uh, 200,000 kilometers of fiber um, all around the world. We have more than 900 network, to our network interface with other operators, 29, uh, more than 29,000 enterprise, enterprise buildings connected, more than 5,000 employees uh, all around support, commercial, pre-sales, product manager, etc. Uh, we have more than 1,000 live cloud, live circuits to public clouds, 32 countries, 900 data centers connected, 25,000 customers in Europe, APAC in the US, and we have a fully, a fully functional help desk environment covering uh, a multitude of, of, uh, of environments over working 24-7. So this is just a simple uh, 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 design on how 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 our network um, uh, segregates throughout the world, right? The world, right? Some some of the capillarity we have throughout the network, and as you can see over here, we cover we cover all of Europe, and we cover also APAC and the US. If you can move forward. So and this leads us to the to the to the point which we have to speak during this presentation, right? So Microsoft Teams, a unified communication uh, tool, which has been growing uh, exponentially in the last couple of months, right? Microsoft Teams uh, had in November 29, 2019, 20 million daily active users, and this growth was exponential during the during the COVID pandemic. Uh, where it grew from 20 million to 75 million. So these are very big numbers, right? But how can we actually ensure that these 75 million daily active users are using the application in the best way possible? Like Scott was saying in the past, uh, like Scott was saying earlier, this uh, Teams is a solution which gives a lot of components, a lot of features, but we have to ensure that our users are using it in the correct way. And I like the sentence of um, your team's usage is only as good as the partner who is, who is helping you implement it. Uh, I like this sentence a lot because it actually represents what is happening on the Microsoft Teams environment, that a lot of, a lot of customers say they're using Teams, but not using it fully. So if you can move on. And this actually represents some of the sentences from some of the consultant firms. Gardner is saying, a lot of companies are, are, are moving to the cloud very, very fast. And McKinsey and company are saying some of them are actually doing just lift and shift, right? They're not taking into consideration that their workloads were based on on-premise solutions, and now they're moving to the cloud. And it's not just moving to the cloud. You have to ensure that your users are, not, are now using those applications in the best way, and that they know how to use it in the end. So, and this was the reason why in Colt we built 
uh, we built the product called Intelligent Communication, which bundles together not only the direct routing proposition, but also the applications, the connectivity, the voice, right? Uh, we put uh, also the professional and adoption services in, a, in, a, in this bundle and the hardware and support, creating a full end-to-end -end proposition, which, which can, can offer you a single point of contact, a single point of contact contract throughout your entire unified communication application, right? Bundling everything and giving support over everything. So, and we also made a partnership with a couple of the providers you can see over there below on the screen. So, what is the typical journey uh, to the cloud, right? Let's start from the basics. So, company X uh, was using its applications on on premise, and they moved all the applications to the cloud, right? They acquired a little bit more IP access uh, space in order to in order to support the access to those applications on the cloud. Um, the next step is that they put they put some some um, some void capabilities if you, if you continue pressing. I don't know who is controlling this. They put the PBX on their premises premises supporting all the, all of their desk phones, uh, the audio conferencing devices, and the video conference devices, and. The, they completely forgot that most of them forgot that they have Microsoft Teams on the cloud. That they didn't they didn't have to have the PBX on premise, and they connected via zip trunk. So most 90% of the users are currently on this place, right, with the PBX on their premise, with Office 365 on you being used on the cloud, and most of them are not taking the full the full uh, features of Microsoft Teams. So what Cole suggests on this phase is actually to move Microsoft Teams to the cloud. Put use a translator, a cloud SPC, uh, in order to support the zip trunk and use a fully cloud solution, right? If you continue pressing. So most of the users don't have voice activated. So whether it's whether on direct routing or whether on the calling plans. And the big and even bigger parts don't even know how to use Teams efficiently, right? They know they, they can move something to, to the cloud. But how can they actually use Teams efficiently and have all the adoption services in order to use that? So this is the overall uh, hier hierarchy of, of what we built in Colt, Colt right? With, with the base of which are the communication services together with the cloud prioritization, which, was a which is a service Colt released a couple of months ago. And uh, it's unique in the entire service provider ecosystem in which we can prioritize the traffic which is going to Microsoft Teams on our backbone. So if you buy an IP access with Colt and you are communicating with Microsoft Teams, that traffic, which we, that traffic will be prioritized in comparison with any other traffic you are generating. OK, afterwards, you have the session board controllers, all the desk phones, headsets, video conferencing, and even the license and its support. So and we we are all we are also building a this fully cloud proposition, which will be available from uh, July onwards, in which we are putting SVCs on the cloud, the cloud SIP trunk also on the cloud and uh, the cloud traffic. Uh, in, in order to provide direct routing as a service. So the idea is that you come to Colt and you say, Colt, I want 10 numbers. I want 10 users with 10 numbers on my, configured with direct routing. And we'll go to that SVC, <coughs> we move the numbers to the zip trunk, and there you have it. We, conf we also configure the users on Teams. We put the numbers assigned to those users, and then you there you have it. It's 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 just as easy as one to three to configure no, new numbers on Microsoft Teams, and if if you're in a in a in a very initial position where you started using Teams, gee, if you can stop that, stop there, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, that's one over there. Uh, if you are in a very initial position in which you you are starting to use Teams, but you're you're, you're not really sure what are the next steps, we can actually Colt can actually provide you with the fast track service. What is Fast Track, you ask? So Fast Track is a is a service which which Colt is one of the of the 21 ready partners in the UK to provide, and this puts a consultant a consultant which which has been working with Microsoft its entire life in order to give you the best practices and the best advice in order to move from where you are now into where you want to be in the future. Afterwards, we also set up a couple of adoption services in order to do this. If you're already using Teams, and but you have a PBX, and you want to 
to put a session board controller on your premises or on a, on a hosted service of your site, and you want to test this in order and have support over all the testing, you want to have a consultant working from you for you, uh, working with you in order to enable direct routing. We, are, we have a proof of concept for direct routing in which we put an SPC on your side or host it on one of our, your virtual machines in which we activate SIP trunk. We do all the planning and design of your network. We configure uh, Teams users. We do all the installation configuration, testing and over and the support for three months. And afterwards, when you decide to go into production, the costs of installing the, S the SPC and configuring the SPC Will be waived off. So with this, you can you can have a very low, uh, a very interesting way of actually moving to direct routing if you're not entirely convinced to do so, and having a consultant working with you in order to have the best practices, and uh, and he will actually put his hands on the on the hardware in order to configure the hardware in the best way possible. So the base price that you're seeing over there is the price which which focuses on the virtual SPC hosted in a customer. Um, hosted in your uh, virtual environment, or if you prefer a virtual SVC like so many, uh, you can actually go, you can actually go with, uh, you can actually go. So if you can move on, Scott, uh, I believe it's Scott. So the important thing over here is that Colt is one of the few providers who can provide you not only the Microsoft Office 365, but also the data connection, also the SIP trunk, also the desk phones, headsets, video conference, professional services, and support also from a single point of contact, creating cult intelligence education. And we were we were awarded for that last year as one of the cloud change agents of the year for our proposition in which we, are, we, 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 were, we were acknowledged to be one of the few partners being able to create this full end-to-end -end solution. Okay, and I, I, I return the ball to Scott. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Rui. That was that was really good. Um, you know, I think the, uh, the the differentiator within Colt is the fact that they're a Microsoft CSP, so there could be benefits around licensing. Um, certainly worth considering if you're um, looking to make that um, transition. Um, so before before I, I wrap up, I just wanted to um, hand over to um, Shane at Talaris, who's Dolores are the sponsors of today and have kindly um, set everything up um, and we'll be sending out a, a gift pack to you all that joins. Um, so um, yeah, if I hand over to Shane and then I'll just wrap up afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shane Speakman. I'm the uh, vice president running the UCAS uh, channel. And uh, I, I got to tell you, t today has been uh, fantastic. Uh, all three presenters, absolutely spot on and this is clearly in our world the biggest conversation right now and uh, I, I have so much to say on this in such a limited amount of time so I'm just going to to, to really fly through just a couple of points that, that I'd like to reiterate and uh, that is number one I would challenge all of you before we start talking about the specifics of adoption or feature set to look at what is the desired business outcome that you, you wish to achieve and from there look at really evaluating what it is that you have and what necessary components you either need to add, replicate, or completely get rid of. And, uh, you know, Ben did a great job of talking about the importance of having that robust network, making sure that you have somebody that not only understands the need with the additional bandwidth as we start looking at these different collaboration tools, but also how direct route or direct connect to the different various cloud companies affects that overall user experience. And understanding that when, when we bring a supplier to the mix, that they are skilled and experienced in making sure that the, the backbone is what's going to really help make the experience as seamless and as easy as possible for, for your users. You know, there's a trend right now with the consolidation to single stack providers. And when I say that, you know, you look at Vonage and, and their acquisition, for example, of New Voice Media and the ability that uh, they have to not only do a UCAS seat, but a CCAS seat and then can seamlessly integrate to an existing Teams environment. And what we're finding is, although, te although Microsoft has purchased Metaswitch and, and 
uh, I have a lot of experience with the MetaSwitch platform, and I would say it's fantastic, and it's great that Microsoft is looking in this direction, but what it really comes down to is having a supplier who can help with that adoption and the integration. And, uh, you know, Scott, you actually, you, you said something there. There are, there are a lot of features and functionality within this that people just aren't using. They haven't adopted it. And so, you know, you look at these different consulting services that are available through some of our suppliers, where we talked about the fast track and the adoption services. These are critical imperative to making sure that your users are as familiar with this as possible. Uh, we had an experience in a hospital where we did an integration and the concern was that the gals, the volunteers who were elderly at the front wouldn't have the capability or propensity to the change or the shift in technology. And after we did a, an in-depth training with them, we came back later only to find out they couldn't believe how easy it was, how hard their difficult or difficult their job was prior with a, with a traditional key system. So. I, I think what it comes down to is making sure that that business outcome is identified and that you have the correct adoption services and the, the proper training. Uh, and look, when we talk about the PSTN, international call routing and such, this is complicated stuff. And, you know, when you look at, for example, the suppliers that we've had today, they are, I would call them PSTN professionals. And uh, look, we've all done this for decades, and when you look at the intricacies that are involved, uh, clearly what it takes is an understanding of the multiple or the various aspects of routing these calls, especially in our environment in the UK where there's so much international uh, international dialing. So I would say great job, gentlemen, today, and uh, <clears throat> I, I myself have taken note, and Scott, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. We're happy to be here. Yeah, great, Shane. Thank you for that. It's a really good summary and um, yeah, appreciate your support. So uh, again, thank you all for coming and, and thank you all for the presenters. Um, this is the last one now. We've, we've, we've run three of these this month and um, as with the rest of them, um, I, I will give you all a follow-up call after it over the next few days just to run through it. But I mean, what, what we're finding is is Many of you are, like Shane said, you know, you, you're trying to find out what's best for your business. You're trying to work out what's right. And, and I think a lot of you are on this journey as to, um, you know, which way to go. You know, Teams is a great collaboration tool, but it's not necessarily the right tool for your business. You know, if, if you're looking for a, for a collaboration tool um, that integrates into other platforms like CRMs and, and um, you know, maybe property management systems, things like that, you know, teams might not be the best route to go down and, and you know, all of the suppliers that we featured today, whilst they do offer integration into teams, they, they also operate their own standalone product, which, you know, outside of Microsoft offers greater integrations into third party applications. So that, you know, there are a few things to consider um, depending where you are on that journey, but it's definitely something that we will help you with. Um, so, like I said, we'll, we'll follow up with, with a call up with all of you and just try and understand where you are within that journey and just try and steer you in the in a right in a better direction, you know, ultimately saving you time, but definitely saving you money. So um, I'll just open it up one more time for, for questions. If anyone's got any questions. OK, no. So great. Thank you all again for joining um, and I will speak to you all soon. Cheers. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Shane. Is now exiting. You're staying on, Greg. Gregory?